is Mel with True-Blood.net. In honor of the 10th anniversary of True Blood's premiere in 2008, we are catching up with various members of the cast and creative team from the show and just taking a walk down memory lane, especially covering that first year and filming the pilot and kind of the phenomenon that exploded after True Blood premiered. On today's episode of 10 Years of True Blood, we are chatting with Carrie Preston. She played Arlene for all seven seasons, and she chats with us about the very beginning of the show and her experience, as well as what she's doing now. Enjoy. Hi, Carrie. Hey, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Great. I'm so excited to get to uh, talk a little True Blood with you after all this time. I know it's been a it's been a minute, but it feels like it was just yesterday. Yeah, yeah, it kind of does. At the, on the one hand, I'm like, it's already been ten years. Oh my gosh! And at the same time, wait, didn't we just finish that? I know, right? Yeah, I know. It's so incredible, but at the same time, like when I think of back to shooting the pilot, it does feel like such a long time ago because so much has happened. Yeah, you know, since we did that. I mean, because we shot the pilot actually eleven years ago, so. You know, it takes a while to get these things cut and ready to, you know, premiere and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. That's right. And the writer yeah. strike happened in there, too. Yeah, that yeah. really almost derailed us. Yeah. We weren't sure if we were going to come back after that. Well, I'm glad you did. Yeah, me too. Yeah. So we're just doing this um, series of kind of retrospective interviews with people um, in honor of the 10th anniversary, and we'll start um, posting them in September since that's the official 10th anniversary month. Um, And so, Mm -hmm. yeah, we just wanted to catch up with you and talk a little bit about that first season in particular and then what you're doing now, um, that sort of thing. So um, you were just mentioning, um, you know, filming the pilot so long ago. I was wondering if you... Do you remember when you first read the script and what you thought about the show as a whole and Arlene as a character? Well, I first heard about the script from the horse's mouth because I was working with Alan Ball at the time uh, that he was getting it set up at HBO. And um, we, he was directing me in a movie that he had written and uh, it's called it was called Towelhead. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, we were on the set and I said, well, what are you doing next? Just making pleasant conversation. And he said, well, I'm doing this show for HBO. It's about vampires. And I was, I said, what? Big question mark, <laughs> question mark, question mark. You know, um, it just seemed so different from anything else that he had done. And he said, yes, I really wanted to, to make something that was fun and popcorn for adults but that maybe had something else to say underneath all that. And I think I have something for you in it. And I was like, oh, great. And they, agents, my agent sent me the script, and I didn't know what role he was talking about. Oh. Um, yeah, because he just said I have something in it, and I read it, and I was like, there's nothing in here for me, because it's not like you look in the dictionary and you see, you know... <laughs> A buxom, redheaded, you know, <laughs> at the time I was a little petite blonde, you know, and, and you know, I, I honestly was a little confused because I knew I wasn't right for any of the other roles. And so finally they were like, no, it's Arlene. He wants you to, he wants you to consider Arlene. And, I, and then I, I looked at it again and, and I thought, oh, awesome. I, I think I know what to do with this. I grew up with women like this. So, uh-huh. um, it was it was after that it was blissfully it was a a pretty um i don't want to say easy because auditioning is never easy but it was it i didn't have to jump through as many hoops Mm -hmm. as i had had to jump before because i'd already worked with him so you know i went in they taped me and he was there and he showed the network and said this is who i want for Erling," and they said okay so i i you know got a got in through the back door in mm-hmm. a way yeah and then yeah. filming the pilot as things were you know you're you're seeing this taking shape and becoming an actual you know an actual place and actual characters um do you remember you know that first those first few scenes that you were filming um what were you thinking oh my gosh this is amazing or oh my gosh what am i doing no we all knew that we were doing something different and 
it had the potential to be really special and you could feel the energy there at the same time it was kind of risky it wasn't like the vampire thing was um considered in any way high art you know yeah. it was sort of considered pulp and and so we you know we knew that we had the muscle of alan and hbo behind us but it was either going to be a sink or swim thing um given the subject matter but looking back on the pilot at the time you can't really see the forest for the trees you know when you're doing something you're just in it and you're you're trying to honor it in the best way you know how with people you've never met before creating a whole universe mm -hmm. a pilot is always a very hard thing to get right you know and it's been a long time since i've watched the pilot but i remember Towards the end of the series, I went back and looked at the pilot because we were doing a flashback to um, a scene that, you know, Arlene was in and that took place during the, the, the time of the pilot. So I was like, I've got to go look at the pilot again. And I remember thinking, um, this, and no wonder this became a hit, this is really so special and you could feel the chemistry amongst the the cast and you could feel the chemistry amongst the designers and the vision of the piece it was all very unique and cohesive and it really pun intended sucked you in <laughs> and Nicely i can done. see why the you know i see why the audience got excited about it it was a very very well made pilot and that was you know because of the extraordinary team that had been assembled it really was and i mean you you said it was risky the subject matter and because that was right at the cusp of the the vampire phenomenon i mean you guys came out and twilight came out at the same time i remember Twi uh, true blood was at comic-con before it had even aired um, and that mm -hmm. was the year that Twilight, the, the first Twilight movie was there. Um, and it just, mm -hmm. you know, for better or worse, I'm, I'm not a Twilight fan, full disclosure. But that, you know, that kind of one-two punch really launched mm -hmm. this whole phenomenon. And mm -hmm. but how, how would you have known that? You know, filming this first season kind of in isolation before anybody saw it. Um, I, I just wondered if, you know, if you had any idea that it was going to turn into this huge, you know, magazine covers and room, you know, ballroom 20 full of mm -hmm. screaming fans and mm -hmm. or if you were just mm -hmm. like, you know what, this is a cool show and it's got something to say and we're, just, you know, we're going to do it. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I know for me, I was excited to be trusted with a Southern character mm -hmm. that I wanted to to make sure I was honoring because that's where I'm from and I always feel that the cute responsibility to portray the Southerners mm -hmm. in a way that's accurate and interesting and um, try not to stereotype them um, and so I was just looking at it at that it, it was a great role obviously working for HBO is a coveted thing at that time and Bill is and so for me it was a big break acting wise regardless of whether or not it was going to go to series and last for seven seasons mm -hmm. you hope that'll happen but so hard to predict and you know I think there was a moment where we were all worried that you know we had committed to doing this fantasy genre type and that, you know, that the industry wouldn't embrace it. Because mm -hmm. I think the industry is a lot of times a little bit snobby about that genre. Yes. And, um, and we were able to actually break through, you know, our first season and I got a Golden Globe. And, you know, it was, it was kind of unprecedented for something like that, for a genre show to get that kind of critical and popular and 
industry support all at once. And it has since, of course, happened with Game of Thrones, but it, it hadn't really hit like that before. Right. I feel like True Blood really paved the way in a lot of areas, not just being, you know, kind of at the uh, pioneer as far as the vampire phenomenon, but making these epic fantasy universes more mainstream, you know, bringing them into, you know, you can go to Hot Topic and get, you know, a Team Eric or, or a Team Bill t-shirt. Like, that had never been true before, that you could see your, exactly. you know, as, yeah. as a sci-fi fantasy fan, I never saw anything for me at the mall. And I think True Blood really exactly. opened the doors for that. It sure did. And they, you know, you, you know, you have to credit HBO for knowing how to market that mm-hmm. and how to, um, and, and Alan for knowing how to strike that balance between the pop culture and the high art. Yeah. So I felt very fortunate to be a part of it. And, you know, I think like with the Twilight, you know, that's geared towards kids. But, you know, our show is geared not. towards adults. And, <laughs> yeah, you know, was... grown up. <laughs> that was not you a know, kid like show. Vampire Diaries, you know, Vampire Diaries was geared towards kids. Right, right. And teens. Yeah. What are you most proud of from the show, either from working on it or just, you know, the show as a whole? I mean, I'm most proud that it, that it had something to say about any disenfranchised group of people that you want to substitute for the vampires. And so it was able to exist on that level and have something really important to say about tolerance and acceptance. But at the same time, it was just surely entertaining and mm-hmm. surprising, you know. And it kept the audiences excited. And as actors you know everyone on the show was able to keep it grounded in in a, in a human place and even though most you know half the half were playing supernatural <laughs> they you know were able to find a way to make those characters human and universal and I think that's not always easy to do so I guess I most job that yeah, be a did, part of something like that. Yeah. Did you um, did you keep anything from the set when you left? I not not really. I have um, you know I have t shirt. I have a my last t shirt that oh. I had everyone sign. Oh, that's yeah. Sweet. So I don't wear it. I have it. You know, I I have it like hung up in my closet, and mm-hmm. um, it's always nice just to. You know, going through my clothes, and then I'll come across it and yeah. have fond memories of, yeah. And, um, you know, mo- more like photos and mm-hmm. um, that kind of thing uh, than than actual, like, set pieces I, or anything yeah. like that. So. It was a, you know, it was a giant show. I mean, mm-hmm. by the end, I feel like every actor and screen actor guilt was on the show at some point you know it was epic that way it was it was so tell me about what you're doing now I know you're on Claws I love Claws I I started watching it because of you and I fell in love with the whole show everybody on it it's so bonkers I love it Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. and bonkers is a good word for it (laughs) and you (laughs) you had some stuff to do this season didn't you for season two yeah they they gave me, yeah, they trusted me with probably one of the greatest episodes of television I've ever been trusted with, which was 209, where I got to play my own twin. I mean, that for me was, you know, a, a step above uh-huh. um, anything I've ever been asked to do. And uh, I was so grateful for that opportunity, you know. Um, I... You know, I, I like I like to sh- I like shape shift. You know, I yeah. like to be a chameleon. I, you know, I never got to play a, a, a shape shifter on True Blood, but I feel like I'm a bit of a shape shifter in my career. And so they've really written to that and in the show and uh, have allowed me to play a dozen characters within my character. <laughs> yes, and that's been that as an actor is uh, quite a a gift and I feel you know very humble and fortunate that 
they have uh, trusted me with that opportunity. Oh, I've just been, it's been a delight. It has been a delight to watch you on that show over the last two seasons, but especially season two. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was a really fun season. And, you know, it's so hard, as you probably realize watching True Blood, the second season is always the hardest. The sophomore season is mm-hmm. very difficult to, because you, you get the audience, then you got to keep them. And right. And so I was very impressed with, the writers and the directors and the producers and, and you know all, all of us as a cast on Claus that we were able to you know uh, continue that journey and still keep the audience guessing and excited and actually grow the audience um, so we, we we feel very excited that that was able to happen and that we didn't have a sophomore slump. Yeah. Um, so, in addition to Claws, what else do you have going on? Are you going to be on The Good Fight again? Or are we going to see Elspeth? You know, I love me some Elspeth. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I don't know. They never let me know until very close to when it's happening. Uh-huh. Um, so, I, I would hope, and I would certainly, if I'm available, I would do it. I, I, will, do, I will go anywhere to play that role <laughs> <laughs> if I'm available. I'm, I'm starting a movie, actually, I leave tomorrow go to Louisiana, ironically, which is uh-huh. also where we shoot uh, Claws. But, um, you just can't get out of Louisiana, can you? And where, <laughs> and where True Blood was set. But yeah, it, it's uh, it's like, I don't know, Louisiana is just somehow part of uh, my life. I guess. Yes, I it's know, calling you. I don't you. know why, but it's call, it calls me. So I'm heading down there to do a movie for the next couple of months. It's called Avalanche. Okay. And um, I'm really very excited about it. It's uh, it's loosely based on some true events around hands on a hard body type competition where people oh. stand around a pickup truck and put their hands on it and the last one standing. Only this is an art house version of that. Oh, so <laughs> that it's not going to be competition. <laughs> it's going to be it's full of eggs. Okay. <laughs> there's a lot. There's a lot going on, but uh, but it's it's a really wonderful script, and I'm very excited too. Oh, awesome get going on it mm-hmm. we'll keep yeah. an eye out for that yeah all right well you. you're a busy woman and everybody needs some of your time so um thank you for giving us some of your time for this of course and i, I appreciate you uh continuing to keep the love for true blood going oh you bet we're we're just excited to get a chance to walk down memory lane with you so thanks thank you for yeah. that again all of right course. Nice to talk to you. You okay. too. all right thanks carrie